from a fallout shelter in Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Holy buckets. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by H&R Block. You got people. For an office there, you call 1-800-HR-BLOCK or visit hrblock.com. Uh, all right, it's Like It's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. You have questions for your professor, just call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. How many of you bet today on the second race at Santa Anita? How many of you? Tom Likas listeners want big money today, and people think I'm making this up. I'm not. Uh, Tom Likas listeners want big money. If you bet on a particular horse today at Santa Anita, you want big money. Let's listen back to the second race today at Santa Anita Park. Up to the gate. Goes in. And away they go. DTV broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Per for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Per for me now going on to do that. And Huss the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. They run to the 5 8 pole, and it's Per for me down at the rail. And DTB, the two favorites, stride for stride as they move down the back stretch just behind that. Wink at the girls racing in behind them comes Harlem, who's now six off those leaders, and Huss the King, the early trailer. Past a half mile they go, and Per for me, comfortably in front by a length. DTB, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to wink at the girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length start and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 5.16s, and Per for me continues to lead them. DTB, though, being confidently ridden, and DTB now cutting into that lead. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Also, Harlem running on in the black, and even Huss the King running on. Suddenly, it's wide open. Homeward bound now, and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the King coming home, gamely down the inside, and Harlem at the rail. Coming for home now, and it's DTB up alongside. Wink at the girls. DTB in front as they run to the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. DTB paying 420, 220, and 210. So uh, Tom Likas listeners <laughs> scored big at the track today at Santa Anita Park. There it is, DTB. Horse number six wins the second race at Santa Anita. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. There's got to be a listener who who bet that horse and won that race. Won on that betting on that race. Absolutely. Let's say hello here to Linda on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I think the problem is you just haven't found the right woman. Oh That's well, people think. love to say that, darling. But uh, I must tell you, it's not a problem meeting the right women. I know plenty of. Of cool chicks, hot chicks. That's the problem. You're still calling women chick. Well, that's, that's not a problem, problem at all. The problem the right for you woman. is that you think I should settle down and treat women with respect and, and, and do what do what do what women tell me to do and to do knuckle under knuckle to under to some chick. You think that's what I should do, but I won't. No, I don't think you should do anything you don't want to do. And at the same I don't. Time, I'm not gonna sit there I do exactly what I want man. to do. 
I do exactly what I want to do. I, well, I so see chicks right, when I want to, and I don't when I don't, and that's how it works. Should. What? I think every guy should go Good. ahead and do whatever he wants to do. Excellent. Even whenever he is married. But that doesn't mean every woman is out to get you guys. I didn't say every saying. woman is out to get guys. I, I, I know that attractive you women are not even capable of it. always out to get guys. We are not. I never use the word always. You use the word always. Oh, please. You make it. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. As I've said on this program many times, even a broken clock is right twice a day. You are absolutely right. But guess what? Guess what? I uh, think guess what? You're trying to think of what you want to say you next? Women out Did I guess correctly? We're not witches. I didn't say you're all witches. Oh, yeah. Oh, here you those are. Those of you who oh, are. You do is those you of you who are. You I know you're a witch. It doesn't mean they're all witches. I, listen, okay, we are not witches. And not only that, we're not to tie you guys down. That's then why do you all insist for. on marriage? Why? It's okay for people who want to get married. Yeah, but why do women insist on it? If they're happy. Why, so why do women, why do women insist on getting married? Why? Why? Well, maybe because they want to come home to someone. No, because they want they, want, want, something sexy they want our money. No. Maybe yes. So many. There's so many well-educated women out Doesn't there. Doesn't mean anything. And they, women are lazy, women are cheap, and women want our money. I don't think so. Oh, I, think I do. do you go home to? How many women have you dated? What do you go home to? What do I go home to? A fantastic yes. home in the Hollywood Hills right. with a fireplace, the the warm glow of the fireplace, a glass and of no great Cabernet, a jazz. No one to share Darling, I have everybody to share it with. I can share it with anybody I want. Last night I had 15 people at my home. I mean, believe me, there's no shortage of people who share my home with me. cook for you that you're paying to cook for you? Darling, believe me, whatever free meals a woman would ever, and by the if an American woman would cook, Cook a meal. Uh, the only free meals people are getting are, are, are they don't they're not free. Believe me, you have to pay. You have to pay the woman's That's part right, of her rent, her mortgage. Nice we have to There's pay. No love involved. Darling, it has nothing to do with love. Women want our money. Women, I don't go home to anybody, and I don't want. It's by design. Oh please! Oh please! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ask, ask the women I've thrown out. Ask the women I have kicked out my front door. Ask them. You come home to anything. You come home by to design. Alone in bed, and that's why I, you're oh, so darling, I'm not alone in bed. Here. The only nights I'm alone in bed are the nights oh, I choose to be. How old are you? Tom, how old are you? I'm 147 years old. <laughs> Time is clicking. Time is clicking. Da darling, I'm not. Know. There is nothing. I have nothing. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't want any women living in my house. What are you going to have to show for it? I, 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 millions and millions of dollars. I've got. I've got valuable real estate. I've got stocks and bonds, and mutual funds. I've got, I've got, uh, are you kidding me? I've got pensions. I've got 401ks. I've got a variety of service marks. I own a corporation. What have I got to show for it? Wah, 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 that's enough. That, you see, by the way, she proved my point. Do I really want that waiting for me when I get home? Is that what I want waiting at my front door? By the way, that's what it's like when you come home. That's what you have to listen to. That's a, is she is the, the reason this offends her so much is because she is the target. She is exhibit A. She is ex, she's patient zero. She's exactly what I'm talking about. That is the reason I choose to live alone. Do I really am, am I pathetic because I don't want to come home and hear that every night? Then does that make me pathetic? I hope, boys, you're paying attention. I hope you heard what just happened there. That's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. That is exactly what I don't want at my home. You don't have anything to share it with. Are you kidding? Fifteen people came to my home for a wine tasting last night. Wine and food and conversation, and it was fantastic. You only should have been there. We drank wines from around the world. Wine from Spain, wine from Italy, wine from uh, Northern California. It was it was fantastic. We drank some ice wines from Canada. It was it was ridiculous. 
It was so good. When I want somebody to come to my house, they're at my house. When I want to have sex, there's someone there to have sex with me. But do I want to listen to that? Do I want to sign a contract to have that living in my home? Do I want that to have the key to my place or the pin number to my ATM or to have the uh, to be the additional card holder on my American Express card? Do I want that person's name on the deed to my home? She gives me a perfect opportunity to lecture to you. That is what you want to avoid. You want to have children with that? Do you want your son to, to have that as a mother? Do you want to open the front door and start listening to that the second the door opens? Do you want to hear all the reasons why you're inadequate, all the things you do wrong, all the things you don't do enough of, all the things you ought to be doing more of? Wah, wah, wah. You want to hear that? Then you go ahead and get married because that's what marriage is all about. Razel, do you agree with me on this? Yeah, man. And you know what? All I got to say is uh, to, to every question that you just asked right now, there's just one big-ass N. Oh, hell no, we don't want that. I know I don't want it. But you know what, Tom? Check this out, man. There's things that a man shouldn't hear. And there's some uh, ball-busting bitches out there. There's some cheap bitches out there. And there's some... Um, Independent bitches out there that just not going to like that. But you know what? I strictly don't give a damn. But you know what? A man should never say I'm married. A man should never say I want to get married. A man should never say I'm divorced. A man should never say that I want to get divorced. Because you know what? Marriage should be strictly for a female like tampons and Oprah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not even playing. I, you know what? Because, you know, it, it kills me when... uh when the, when the wedding day comes, it's always the female's most important day. Well, what the hell? Well, what the hell am I marrying you for? Then to go ahead and marry yourself if, if the day is so important to you. Exactly. I, I don't get it. It, it. it just don't make no sense that these bitches are the way they are. I don't get it. And then they expect for a man to bow down to something like that. No, I ain't bowing down to nothing like that at all. It ain't happening. Absolutely. Up to the gate. Goes in. Hello. Where they go? DTV broke well from the outside gate along the inside Harlem. Now they're all lining up on the lead, though. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Now there goes Purr for me to kick on. They weren't too keen to get an early leader, but Purr for me now going on to do that. And Huss the King is at the back. Four lengths would cover the lot. They run to the 5 8 pole, and it's Purr for me down at the rail. And DTB, the two favorites, stride for stride as they move down the back stretch just behind that. Wink at the girls, racing in behind them comes Harlem, who's now six off those leaders. And Huss the King, the early trailer. Past a half mile they go, and purr for me, comfortably in front by a length, DTV, quite content to just sit there in the second spot. Then it's two lengths back to wink at the girls, now coming after them from third. Harlem is still giving them seven length start and three more to Huss the King. They come past the 5.16s, and Purr for me continues to lead them. DTB, though, being confidently ridden, and DTB now cutting into that lead. A wink at the girls in the pink colors. Also, Harlem running on in the black, and even Huss the King running on. Suddenly, it's wide open. Homeward bound now, and it's DTB who goes on to get the lead. Wink at the girls tackles immediately. Hunk the kick coming home, gamely down the inside, and Harlem at the rail. Coming for home now, and it's DTB up alongside. Wink at the girls. DTB in front as they run to the wire. DTB's one of the neck. Wink at the girls second. Harlem a close third. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sometimes I make a date to go out with them, and I do your rule. I say to them, what time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back, and I say, look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. I'm, I am your professor. It's one 800 800 tom and Dean J. D'Amelio, he, uh, he did his research, and he found the owner of the horse, DTB. His name is C. Sam Maggio, and here he is joining us right now. Hey, C. Sam, how you doing? Good afternoon. 
We were very excited. We heard your horse won the second race today. Yeah, I won the second race. A very close finish. It was a very exciting race. Uh, how uh, how much experience does uh, does DTB have? Well, it's his third race. He's a three year old. He raced uh, in San Francisco area and came in last. Then he raced uh, about three weeks ago at Santa Anita and came in second. And today he broke his maiden. Uh, now, I, I believe a lot of our listeners probably put money down on DTP. Well, he was a favorite. He didn't pay much, but at least he won. Absolutely. Yeah, and, that's the main thing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what a coincidence that you use the DTB on your station a lot. <laughs> yes. Now, we found out DTB wasn't what we thought it was. We thought it stood for <laughs> Dump That Bitch. Hey, that is uh, that is really that's really a coincidence. And I'll tell you what, a lot of guys are going to bet on that horse just because it's DTB. And you got a lot of rings from your listeners about the horse. I got email. I got calls. I got you name it. Well, it was you all didn't here. know it was running until they called you? Now, I didn't know it was running until it won the race, and then people wrote to me and said, hey, second race at Santa Anita today. They thought, they thought that was your horse. That's right. Should well, have been my horse. It's my horse from now on. It's your horse, but I'll tell you yeah, what, if well, I'm at the track and I see DTB, I'm putting money down. Yeah, well, if he stays sound, he'll run again in probably a month. Sounds good to me. Now, now tell us what DTB stands for. Well, it's uh, Dominic Bianco, a friend of mine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Middle initial T. The listeners were convinced <laughs> that you were a well, listener. It's not even close, but uh, it's interesting anyway. Yes. Well, well, thanks for your interest. If you find we'll any, look for him to win again, hopefully. If you find an unusual amount of betting activity, Sam, you're going to know okay. where it is. You're going to know where it came from. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. There he goes, the owner of DTB, the horse. See Sam Maggio. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's up, Dad? Not much, sir. Hey, check it out. I've been listening to you since 2003. Uh, Love it. You've been my father ever since. Perfect. <laughs> uh, check it out. I've had a couple mistakes, a couple things I've done. But thank God I've never been married, don't have any kids. And uh, throughout the years... I, I was looking for that perfect phrase to fit my life so that I wouldn't get married. And guess what that phrase is? I got I got it for you. Tell me. Uh, I want all the fellas to listen because it might change your life. And the phrase is, marriage is for those that can't make it on their own. <laughs> Guys with no that, game, get married. I live by that rule, man. I heard it last year and when I was contemplating marriage. And I said, you know what? This makes sense. If I can't make it on my own, then that means I, I need to depend on someone. I need to depend on a woman to take care of me. I need to depend on a woman to fulfill whatever emptiness there might be inside. The hell with that, man. I'm, I'm going to fulfill myself. I'm going to make myself happy, get myself a career, get myself going, and feed myself, <laughs> not treat other people, because that's what they're after, man. They're after your money. And the long when, when you boil it all down... They're after your money, man. Marriage is for guys who can't afford their own apartment. <laughs> there you go, man. Thanks for being. Hey, I got one more, man. Remember that old phrase called the uh, WWJD? Yes. Man, what would Jesus do? Yes. We need to come up with new bumper stickers, man. It says WWTD. WWTD. I agree with you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he sounded overwhelmed there. Unbelievable. One eight hundred five eight hundred Thomas. He didn't know we'd be ready for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Thomas. Our telephone number is Likus one hundred one. I am your professor. This is Mike on the Tom Likus show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey. Hey, I gotta ask you. Yeah. See me and my buddy. We got one problem, and only one. I've been listening to yours for, oh, about 12 years. Wow. Now, your screener told me to tell you that I was married twice. And you're 30, and you've already been married twice. Right. And First divorced twice. Almost nine months. Almost nine whole months. Well, my first marriage was a lot like your first marriage. Really? Was she Jewish? 
No, oh. actually, she wasn't. But in almost every other regard, yeah, it was. <laughs> I was with you on Russ earlier <laughs> today. Uh, went all good and everything else, you know. But you know, there was one different. One of us wanted children, and one of us didn't. Right, that's that my first marriage. But you see, the thing is, when I got married the first time, we both didn't want children. That's what she told me. And then a couple of years in, she said, you know what? I changed my mind. Yeah, that has a tendency to happen with women. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. And it costs you. You know, mm -hmm. it costs you. And, you know, at that point in time, I just started listening. But, you know, whatever. All right, so what's the I current was, problem, Mike? I was a new customer. Look at that. All right, what, what is your current problem? Current problem is we have two 200 pound dogs. And I'm wanting to know your opinion on dogs in the house. Now, yes, they are out, but that's not going to get rid of the hair. <laughs> well, um, why are you living with her? Can you tell me that? Uh, well, actually, about oh, six years ago, you know, I was still listening. And, uh, I'm like, well, you know, I love her. She loves me. Neither you, one can't you love her. somebody who doesn't have the key to your apartment? I, I don't get it. Well, Why is the only way to show your love to give someone the key to your place? We agreed to make a living arrangement. You? Why did you agree to do that? Because it's mutually beneficial. So, in other words, you can't afford an apartment or a house. Oh, yes, I can. Then, then how is it mutually beneficial? Well, because we both can, and we both can have more back towards our retirement the way it is now. And we've been together for several years, so it's kind of mutually beneficial. Okay. But both of us agree that... So it has nothing to do with love. It has nothing to do with love, correct? Oh, no. Nah. I wouldn't say that. I love her to death. Mm. But I love her almost mostly because she has the same opinions that I do about marriage and children. And... You see what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> I hear the da 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 But... What do you think that Basically, means? what we have is we agree not to have children, which neither one of us can anyway. But we agree not to have children. We're sharing a house right now, which we just started sharing it uh, about four months ago, after four and a half years. Okay, ran out of gas. Thank you for that. Do we have the uh, little... Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's go to Ann on Like It's 101. Hello, Ann. Hello. Yes. How are you? Great. Great. I was just wanting to put my opinion in, and, and my opinion is this. I'm on the other side of it. I am a woman who lives with a man who can't afford to live by himself because he needs a roommate. And when it first started out, when I moved in, I have my own income. I pay my own bills. When we first, when I first moved in, after a year and a half, he was like, let's put our money together, right? So I put my money in his checking account. Well, um, now I don't know what happens to the money because, like, Everything gets paid, but I don't ever really ask him about it. And if I ever need anything, like, say say my friends come out and they say, you want to go out to Razoo's. I can't go to Razoo's because I have to go all the way home to ask for money to go to Razoo's. And I don't have my own bank account because he wanted me to close my bank account and put it in with him. And, you know. Why did you do that? Because I'm an idiot. Okay, I'll buy that. You stop giving him money. To do that... 
I got to go through a whole beef. We just went through a whole beef right now with his, him spending over $300 for his son's birthday. But whenever my daughter wanted some money because she had to pay her lot bill, I couldn't help her. All right, but, all right but let's, let's cut to the chase here. Couldn't you just sell him? You take care of your problems with your daughter, and I'm going to take care of my problem with my daughter and or son or whatever. And and you you have your money, and I'll have my money. Why can't you do that? I want to, but then he won't be able to afford to live. That's his make problem. It so hard for me to stay then, there. Then then like, make him leave. No, I'm in his house. Then leave. I know. Why don't you? You're 41 years old. Yeah, you can't. I own my own home, and my my daughter and my son. Wait, live who's there. living in it? Your daughter and your son live in yes. your home, but you don't. Yes. So move there tonight. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I just wanted to say that I don't think that a man's money should uh, support a woman just solely because she wants to have a relationship with him. I, I agree, with, agree that, with that, but now I, I don't. I don't I, understand why you will live there one second more than after this call. Why wouldn't you get to pack your things and leave tonight for your own house? I know. No, no, that's, don't. That's what's the stupidity of it is that you, you know, you see somebody and you've known them for ten years, right? It is not you your into... job to fix people. I know. So stop doing it. Tonight is the night. You're going to take your things and go to your own home <laughs> that you're paying for. Yep. And that, that I don't get to enjoy because I have, like I said, and that's really stupid of me because I'm a financial uh, loan officer and I know how it goes, you know, and I know how bills and budgets and like that. Well, stuff that, that's his problem. He's a big boy and he, he's going to have to learn how to take care of himself. It's not your job to do that. Yeah, I, I seriously think it's a control issue. You know, like how women want to control guys. But the, but the darling, you it, for everybody who is a controlling individual, there's a sucker like you making it possible. Yeah, yeah, and the guy that works with me, he's is like, he Man. that good in the sack? Yeah, but you see, know, all right, that's see, that's always the reason why people tolerate this crap. I'm serious. I mean, but he, he's he's got the greatest points but you know what I, I guess what i'm trying to say is that sometimes you make sacrifices for people and forget it's not it for that's you, not that what this is about for your rights you have to and i have just fought tonight I, I did it before i even called you and the only reason why i'm calling you is because i'm on the other side i can understand what guys go through i have seen people that pay child support and almost their whole check goes to child support the guys you know and the, the girl's sitting fat and she's not even spending the money on the kids i've seen that and i had to raise my kids by myself because their dad died early you know in 93 when they were only five six and seven i had to raise them by myself so it's been a big change and for me and i really really like this guy he's divorced with two kids and i have to you know i want to help him you know what i'm saying it's why because like, i suffered it's not your job to help anybody get over it <laughs> and you see all these people who call me is it you hate women no i'm telling you the same thing i'd tell a guy yeah that today is the day you're gonna stop trying to help because you're not helping anybody. He is codependent. He is. Uh, he has got problems of his own, and you can't fix people. Yeah. So you I'm... have to get out. That he's doing this because you are a willing victim. A willing victim. That's what you are. Okay. So tonight is the, you make a statement. You pack a bag tonight, come back for the rest later, get out. Okay, so what about getting out and still having a relationship? It's not you can have a relationship, time. but he doesn't get one penny. Yeah, because see, like, this is the deal. This The fight started when I had to start paying half of the mortgage, but I'm not even on the mortgage. You know what I'm saying? What happens if he wants to kick me out? Why should you week? have to pay any of the mortgage? You have a house. Exactly, because he wants me to live with him. Well, guess what? You live in your own place. If he wants to have a relationship, he comes over and picks you up for a date. That's it. And you don't pay for his gas, you don't make his car payments, and you don't make any goddamn payments. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So you have to do it now. Make a statement tonight. Tonight is the night you pack a bag, take your stuff home. Reclaim your house. Reclaim my house. Yes! 
stop paying for his house and start tarting up your own house. <laughs> that money you're spending on his house, which you'll never see again, because your name's not on the deed or the mortgage. No, it's not. That money can be going to improving your own home. I know. That's what I was thinking. Or you could live in an even better house. Look what's happening. You, you're in the mortgage business. Look what's happening to real estate right now. Are you kidding me? In Texas? Do you know what kind of homes are vacant, have been foreclosed upon, are yes, available for somebody like day. you right now? Yes. And that's what I'm saying. You know, it's making it tough for me. And that's why I'm calling you to let you know that it's not only guys that see it as a target, because I am also a target as being a girl. I never really. But Donna, you, you, you're only a target because you volunteered for the job. Yeah. I know. And that. End it now. It's always the hardest time to get out of. You know, I really. What I really is so hard that. about it? He's an adult. You're not leaving. Is he? Is he handicapped? Is he? Is he disabled? No. No. I mean, is he mentally retarded? No. He's very smart. Is he physically incapable of coming, getting up in the morning, and driving to an office? No. But you know what it is? It's a control issue, and that's what he. But you is. are you. The controllers can't be controllers without willing victims like you. Right. And that's what I told him tonight. Yes. I was like, you know Stop what? worrying about what's wrong with him. Let's talk about what's wrong with you. <laughs> what's wrong with me is that I don't want to let go because I want I, I really do. Love He's him. a loser. He is a he is a complete loser. And you are you're stepping into the quicksand with a loser. OK. Do you think that it's right for him to ask for that? Like I'm paying rent. You know it, what I'm saying? Again, like, you you shouldn't be living with him. I shouldn't be. Why do you need to live with him? Because this is what he said. Move in with me at first, right? And because you love me and I love you and you don't have to drop. No, oh, he wants house. someone to pay his mortgage. That's You're right. being used. Get out. Okay. I'm listening. And that means now. It is just so hard. You don't understand. Oh, please. Even I don't now. Want to seem like a whip. Just I don't look, want to be you're eat, you've been on the air eight and a half minutes. You're eating up air life. time. You know, you, you're an attention whore. You're eating up air time. You want to sit here and about this. You need to get out. <laughs> okay. Well, talk to somebody else. But I mean, I don't mind. I, I don't mind having a conversation with you, but, you, but you're not listening to me. Yes, you don't. Then do it. Okay. Don't tell me all the good reasons to be an idiot. I know it. Just do it. I know it. Can't you just do it? I'm trying. No. There's, trying is not doing anything. I know it's not. That means not. no. Trying means no. No. I'm just going to... I gonna said, can't you do it? And you said you're trying. That means no. I can't. I'm start by taking my money back. That's the first step, I feel like. And once I no, get my you're money s back... You're not getting your money back. You're time? not getting your goddamn money back. You're not getting it. It went down a black hole. <laughs> it's like sending money to Africa or any other poor place. <laughs> you, that, that money's going down a sinkhole. People will always be starving. They'll always be dying. So the money's never checking, coming back. Leave all my money in the checking account and walk out with nothing. Well, do you have a check? No, I, can't, I don't have access to none of the money. Well, <laughs> darling, you put yourself in this position. I know. You know what? Chalk it up as a lesson learned. You tell him on. if he wants. You tell him if he wants to see you. He has to bring money. Okay. You tell him if he wants to go on a date with you. He needs to bring cash. I mean, all you know, the I cash he owes. To pay my own way, that, because that's you know. I mean, my me pay half and him pay half. Yeah. I would be willing to Fine. do that. Fine. If he wants to go on a date with you, he has to bring all of the cash he owes you. That's it. Period. He's not going to bring all that. That's my point. The money is gone. Pack your things. Go. Hopefully you learned an expensive lesson here. All right. I thank you. Thank you. one 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. Why would he trust you? Because I give him what he wants, Tom. I'm good at what I do. If you understand what I mean, I don't want to say it over the radio. There's no, there's no chrome on your trailer hitch at home. Is that what you're telling us? Um, I think so. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom 
Like Us Show, Like Us 101. I am your professor at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Well, this is LJ on the Tom Like Us Show, Philip. Yeah, apparently your show is all about your failed marriages, and you have apparently some sort of. Uh, mm-hmm. And vendetta against all these women. Are you a psychiatrist? Nope, don't need to be one. Psychologist? Nope, don't need So to what be are one. your credentials here? Don't need the credentials. I'm here calling in. You don't need you any credentials, but you're here speculating about a person you've never met and know nothing about. Well, I can just look at the results. What all I know is you don't seem to know how to pick a mate very well, do you? It has nothing to do with picking a mate. It has that? to do with the fact that the um, uh, institution of marriage is fatally flawed. No, it's because It does not just... work in the 21st century. Yeah, what you should do is not pick the first woman who gives you a woody. I, I, I be a believe me, that's how you pick I lady. never did that. And what do you know about it? Well, I've been married for 22 years. So what? Yeah, and? So, so again, somebody wins the big spin every Saturday, too. So what does that prove? Well, first of all, you know, be, marriage is very important to to uh, uh, to, to people anyway. It's, it's not it's important at all. It's completely unnecessary. Not, ne- not unnecessary. Completely it's unnecessary. unnecessary. It's not unnecessary. When sure you think it about is. the fact that you, you like to have sex, don't you? I do, and I get why? it whenever I want it. No, no, but, but why? Because it feels good. Right. It feels good because you need to procreate. That's the whole thing. No, it feels sex. good because it feels good. Are you a biologist? I don't need to be a biologist to know that one. How do you know? How do you know? If your dad, if your dad took your 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 so what? You're telling you me born, that you're telling me the people right. you you're telling me the people either. who are impotent. You're telling me the people who are sterile you can't have sex. No, I'm talking about the general. Well, the, uh, people who have and people who are sterile, people, people who are sterile still get aroused. Do you know that? How do you explain that? I don't explain it. It's just one why of those can't things. you explain it? Don't need to. I see. You don't need to explain anything. You know nothing about anything. You don't need to explain anything. You don't need to have any credentials. You're just an idiot with a big mouth. No, apparently you're you're a character who's got a show here who feels really bad about what happened to you. I don't feel bad at all. I, so when I feel, you know let me I tell you something. Bad. When I feel bad about, about what I feel bad about, Grandpa, is that I didn't figure all this out a long time ago. That the institution of marriage is effed. It's completely screwed, and that by not getting married, men will be happier than they've ever been. And the men who call in here tell us how happy they are. Of course they do. Just it's because true. you're married to some old uh, war horse here doesn't mean the rest of us need a battle axe like you have. <laughs> See, you just picked the wrong women. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with picking the wrong women because the fact is there's very few women anybody could stand to be with for 22 years, let me tell you. Well, it's just so you're a little jaded doesn't mean we all have to be. I didn't say, well, get, uh, nobody's telling you to get a divorce. All I'm saying is that most men will be a lot happier never getting married. And not having kids, right? I, well, uh, I personally don't choose to have kids, but if you choose to have kids, you still shouldn't get married. Oh, so let's have a lot of bastard kids running around. They, they already are. If you've well, been well, looking let's around. More. Let's encourage that. Why people. not? Absolutely. More and more because they're already out there. Yeah, well, we don't need to encourage that sort of thing. Well, what do you mean we don't need to encourage it? What do you... They need their father, need their mother. Uh, there's a, they're, 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 there's a, they're, they're, the father is there, and he's always available, and you can be available, and you can live in the neighborhood, you can be there for a kid, but believe me, most kids who go to school today, most of the parents are divorced now. Most kids live with one parent, not two. That's the way it is. It's a sad, it's a it's sad because people are... Who freaking right who? I don't care. Yeah, it's it's better than right men people. putting themselves in a position uh, that is disadvantageous to them. Well, I'm really sorry that you can't satisfy these women very well. Apparently, you got to go... Well, again, you, you know, you've said that three times. Place do place you have any place. other material, Grandpa? Do you have any other material? We're not... We're not. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. You said it three times. That's enough. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How's it going? Great. So I wanted to thank you for your guidance over the last year or so that I've been listening to you. Uh-huh. I uh, was dating a chick for like two years, over two years, and uh, I recently d 2 b her. Um, I'm 19, and over the last couple of years, like my brother had been telling me, dude, she's just using you. You're just wasting your money on her and everything. So uh, finally, after listening to you and getting it through my thick head, I dropped her. Um, but now uh, she's still around, kind of just as friends, still talk here and there. and still. Why do you need a chick as a friend, for Christ's sake? Just get the sex and get out. It's the Tom Likas Show.